Cost Cutters is your family's full-service salon specializing in cuts, colors, and curls. Visit any one of our professional stylists today and get the look you want for less. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Making a Gray. Winona, I hope everything's going well for you. I'm Dr. Stephen West, the superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. Uh, I am uh, excited to have two guests with me today. Uh, this is Mark Winter. He's my director of alternative learning, but he's also the Winona Area Learning Center's principal, head director, whatever you want to call him. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, I know what's going <laughs> on with you. you <laughs> and over to my far left is Steve Gilbertson. He's one of our WALC teachers. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Good. Before we get started, I wanted to make an announcement that I wanted to just uh, say that uh, Cost Cutters of Winona is our new sponsor here. I want to thank uh, Brian Masiga for the generosity uh, for Cost Cutters. People are mocking me because I have no hair. Uh, but I promise you guys I'm coming over there to get it really cleaned up for you. Uh, so thank you very, very much for sponsoring us here uh, with Making It Great, and hopefully this is, will be a long-term relationship with, making it, uh, with uh, uh, Cost Cutters of Winona. Just wanted to do that. So let's talk about the ALC. We've been making some significant changes. I kind of know what's going on, but our community doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, let's start over here, uh, Steve. First and foremost, who are you? Uh, tell me about your education. Tell me about, you know, some work background. Uh, my name is Stephen Gilbertson. I'm from Oak Hill, Wisconsin. Uh, oh, you're a Wisconsin guy. Yeah, I'm a Wisconsin guy. Oh, Wisconsin my God. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, went to WSU, graduated in 2014 with a special science education degree. Mm -hmm. My first job was at the Winona Area Learning Center, uh, and I started last year, so I'm going into my second year this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I also coach football and baseball here at I see you out there at the field yeah. last Saturday night. Yep. I saw you walking up and yep. down the field. Yep. Okay. So y you chose to come to an ALC as your first gig. Yeah, I've been in the district uh, since 2009 coaching football at the middle school mm -hmm. for seventh grade for four years, mm -hmm. coaching baseball for six years. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first opportunity kind of that you know came up to me at, was at the ALC, and I got to meet the staff, and I enjoyed it. So yeah. I'm well. glad that. I'm glad that this is my first ALC. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, you got to be really a uh, unique individual to handle that. We'll talk more about uniqueness in a bit. So, Mark, what is the ALC? Um, ALC is a, an educational center that is um, just an alternative to a traditional high school. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small staff. Basically, w what makes us a little more unique is the size of the building mm -hmm. and the fact that our class sizes are small. Mm -hmm. um, we also have limited homework. Um, for whatever reason, and there are many reasons our students are at the ALC, but they just weren't successful in a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. um, so we offer the opportunity for them to still get their high school diploma. They still get a Winona Senior High School diploma when they graduate. They still take the same courses, but it's in a little different structure and um, just a different setting from a traditional high school. And I, I, think, uh, I think there's always a mischaracterization uh, of ALCs. Either one of you could speak to this about just being a, a, just a spot where it's a dead end place for our kids who have struggled at the traditional high school. W one of you want to speak about those, that characterization? Um, I can't just uh, from being an outsider coming into the district. Yeah. Everyone told me to stay away from the ALC, stay away from yeah. the ALC. It's yeah. Nothing good happens there. Uh, it's trouble, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Get in the high school, stay in the high school. Um, when I got the job and I was fully expecting that, and all of a sudden it's like, well, there's nothing wrong here. Yeah. You know, it's kids that are, you know, are trying to have an education and it just didn't work at, yeah. the, at the high school. Mm -hmm. So, as Mark said, better class size, you know, smaller class sizes, more one on one work. It allows the students to, you know, work on their credits, you know, but maybe at a slower pace and more one on one. So it allows them to be able to get through. Well, one of the biggest pieces that I am proud of is the staff itself. You must have a flexibility, uh, and that goes to the uniqueness of the staff to, to do this type of work. It uh, it's sometimes can be a tough job uh, because for whatever reasons our kids have chosen to be at the ALC. Um, and so the staff has to also be able to be really flexible, to be understanding, a lot more understanding than I would say in a more traditional setting. And it's, it's no disrespect to my teachers in a traditional setting. It just means there's something uniquely different with a staff member at an ALC. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And our staff has really been great. Yeah. Uh, this is my fifth or sixth year at the ALC. And mm. we've, had some, we've had some struggles, and mm. we have days that are struggles. But 
but we all realize that our kids are coming in with, yeah. with many issues and many problems, but yeah. every day is a new day. So, uh, you know, if they struggle one day, they come in the next, and we, we start over and That's just, right. just continue on. So, um, But I can't say enough about the staff because yeah. it, the building wouldn't be the way it is right now without a great staff. So one of the ways that we have evolved the ALC is on a new initiative that we're uh, looking at. And so uh, I know school people don't like the word initiative. <laughs> uh, I hate the word <laughs> itself. But um, let's talk about this, this new uh, initiative, this new idea of project-based learning. Steve, you want to chat about that a little bit? Yeah, Mark brought to the table you know, last, last year. Yeah. It, it just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. it, we were a smaller high school, mm -hmm. pretty much. You know, and the word alternative was not being used Absolutely. at our school. And so he brought the idea of project-based learning to us. And we brought in you know, information. We brought in a person to teach us uh, project-based learning. And what it does is it simply we put the onus of education on the students, and we guide them throughout. So we give them a question, and we give them a framework, and they fill in the framework with what they feel is going to get them to that result of the question. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why the shift, Bill? Um, you know, the ALC, it's not that it wasn't successful, because the way we were doing it still was successful for some students. Um, but the way we were delivering instruction was pretty much one-to-one, -one, here's your work, and, and you kind of work independently. Um, it had been that way really probably since it was open, you know, 20 some years ago. Um, and, and we were just seeing that we weren't reaching all kids. Mm -hmm. um, the kids weren't really engaged. Um, attendance was really dropping. And, and we just really saw that what we were doing wasn't being as effective as it could be. Um, so we, we looked at options. We, we tried several things. We didn't know for sure what would be the best. Um, but uh, last fall, the staff was very open to trying some new things. We yeah. did a couple pilots with project-based learning, not knowing necessarily what exactly we were doing. And we really saw a difference in student engagement. Um, we really saw them starting to get excited about what we were doing our project yeah. in. And, and once we saw that, we, we thought this is the way we do need to go. And then we looked into some further staff development and, um, you know, actually did it over Valentine's Day. Our staff was very dedicated Amazing. and, and Amazing. came in, yeah. you know, on a Sunday, yeah. on Valentine's Day, every one of them were there. <laughs> and, uh, we, you know, we, we got uh, some great uh, training. And from that point on, we've been working through the point of implementation this fall. And, and we're continually to grow and learn, but um, we're starting to make some real progress. So, Steve, what do you see a quarter way through all of this? Um, I, I see a difference. I really do. Uh, is it perfect? Not yet. Right. Okay, because we're learning right along with the Absolutely. students, and we don't know exactly, you know, when things are going to happen, what's going to happen. But uh, this year, I already see our students, and you'll h listen to a couple, uh, mm -hmm. you know, testimonies later about they're going out in the community, and they're, I'm seeing them engage with the community for the first time. Uh, the community before would maybe not even know we exist, what we what we are. And we've sent kids to other buildings in the district. We've sent them to Woodlawn Cemetery. We've sent them yeah. to um, the nursing home to help. You know, and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, where are you from?" And well, we're from the ALC. Well, isn't that where bad kids go? Well, no. You know, we're we're just misunderstood. You know, at this point. And so I'm seeing them go out and actively engage in their learning. Not to mention, we just got over our. Presentations and last year I had to force them up and <laughs> drag them up and they'd still just walk out of the classroom and yeah. all of a sudden this year every single person presented yeah. and so it, it's getting better yeah. you know it, it, we're not happy yet but you know we got to keep on building off this momentum. See, I think that's part of the fault of education in the sense that we think just because we implement something that it has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. that, that's not reality. No. That's not real. What's real is we evolve it, we move it. We said this doesn't work. Let's try this, and and so this is where we're at a quarter, in, you know, a quarter way through the process. Yeah. Is yeah, we're learning as they're learning, and so, so you talked a little bit about some of the things the kids are doing. Any other things that they're working on uh, in regards to project-based learning? Bill? Well, it really were. What are we on our third project? Yep, third or fourth project. Um, so, and everyone has been very different. Yeah. Um, so. And they'll continue to be different, but, but all of them we continue to try to get out in the community. Um, so we're doing a, a recycling project right now, mm -hmm. so where they went out to uh, one of the local scrap yards in yeah. town and checked some things out. Um, you know, we're the last one with community service where for 
you know, three, four, five days, we were sending our kids out in the community every day just doing community service, whether it was at the cemetery. Um, we were down in the east end picking up garbage. We were in elementary school. So, so many different things, and, and it's something that the kids got to choose what they wanted to do, what they had an interest in, and then we build off that. And, and so they were engaged. They were ready to go out and do something that they really wanted to do. And uh, it was really, it's neat to see them be excited and to want to go do these things. Well, I, I, saw a, I saw a couple of the young ladies from ALC at the middle school, and mm -hmm. I happened to be walking over, and they happened to be there. And uh, I said, what are you guys doing over here? And they said, hey, we're just doing some work here for Project Base. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, okay, that was exciting. So I have to tell you, it's, uh, I only have a couple minutes here with this first segment, but to watch the evolution of the ALC, that these kids are at, uh, at different places. When I first got here two years and some change, it was a different building. It was a different feel to it. And now to walk into that building, to, to go into classrooms, it's not perfect. Nothing ever is. But to have kids engaged in their learning, to have kids get out to the community where community members see not just a traditional kid, but a kid that's an alternative kid. Mm -hmm. And they're not bad kids. No. There, there are different reasons for them being in this right. spot. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, and you know, just about the last community service project, I first, I, a student came back and said, wow, I feel really good about what I just did. I've never felt this before. Wow. Because they've never, you know, done something for someone else. You wow. know, it's always like, you know, what, and what can I do? And so we finally put them out there and we have, you know, those young ladies that went to the middle school and elementary school, mm -hmm. they got to learn what it was like to be the leader of the classroom, not just sitting in the classroom. They okay. led a lesson, they helped the kids, and they saw what we go through every single day. Mm -hmm. So they're learning, you know, multiple professions, and they don't even realize it. They're just going in there and helping. So I want to thank both of you. Mark, I want to thank you for your leadership on this. I want to thank you, Steve, and the rest of that tremendous staff over there for really focusing on our kids. They're our kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we don't want to lose them. So I want to thank you both, and I'm looking forward to the second segment here, uh, Making a Grade with a couple of our kids here. So thank you both, and we'll be right back with uh, Making a Grade here. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price Perfect. is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. look at the right price perfect is always in style at cost cutters located in the professional building in the Winona Mall 507-454-6030 HBC Giga World is fiber optic which means there's more capacity for more devices with HBC Giga World your broadband experience gives you unsurpassed capacity allowing multiple users in your home to surf shop game and stream all at the same time with no buffering or lag HBC GigaWorld, with more bandwidth and reliability than any other provider, giving you the best speed and capacity for your GigaHome experience. Visit HBCI.com to learn more. Turn your friends into GigaFriends with HBC and earn up to $50 on each qualifying referral. Up to $50? That's right. More input, please. When HBC customers refer their friends to sign up for HBC services, they can earn up to $50. If they get two friends to sign up for services... Mm, that would be $100? Uh, that's right. Pretty quick with the math there. Affirmative. We are robots. Math is kind of our thing. Hmm, never would have guessed. Grab some GigaFriends and start saving today. Perfect. Perfect. Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect. Is always in style.
at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. Cost Cutters is your family's full-service salon specializing in cuts, colors, and curls. Visit any one of our professional stylists today and get the look you want for less. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Making the Grades. I'm Dr. your host, Dr. Stephen West, Superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. Again, as I said before, I, before we get started with the kids here, it, first of all, welcome both of you. Uh, I wanted to again thank our new sponsor, Cost Cutters of Wisconsin or Wisconsin Winona. Uh, I want to thank Brian uh, Masiga uh, for really uh, uh, believing in us and what we're trying to do here at Winona Area Public Schools around making a grade. All right, guys. Welcome to my immediate left. I have uh, Jack Benson. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. What grade you in, Jack? I'm in 12th grade. You're, oh, you're a senior. Yeah. Okay. So, and to my far left here is Tristan Henry. How are you? I'm very good. I'm doing very well. What grade are you in? I am also in 12th. Okay. So we got two seniors here. So we're getting close to the end for you two. Yeah. Are you excited about all that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's start it. I, I got a chance to talk with Mr. Winter. I got a chance to talk to Mr. Gilbertson earlier in the segment. I wanted to just talk about... Um, how long have you been in ALC? Uh, two and a half years, close to that. Two and a half years? Yeah. How about yourself? This is actually my first year. Very first year. Where yeah. were you at before that? I was doing online. Oh, at, during Houston? Is that the Houston school district? or um, school district? No, I was going through K through 12. Okay, okay. So this is your first time at the ALC yep. first year, and this is year two and a half for you. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the new school year. What are you seeing? What are you feeling at the ALC? Um, it's a lot different from the previous years. Uh, all in all, I think the the student outlook is way more positive okay. in total. I think everyone is happier to be doing more hands-on stuff than just worksheets. Wow. So we're s I, I'm seeing a lot more like student interaction. Student engagement. About yourself, you feeling pretty good? Oh right? yeah, I yeah. feel great about it. Yeah. What about yourself? You're I new here, so tell us. I am. Tell I think it's it's pretty a uh, pretty unique project or system. Mm -hmm. I think it's not only fun for just the students, but the teachers also to go on, you know, trips and learn about it. Yeah. And I think I can recall the information better than I would normally do by just sitting on a desk and reading about it. It's definitely giving me more skills than I would have gotten just reading the paper because uh, in the last project we were uh, just helping out people in the community and it gave us, uh, I did not particularly go to talk to the people, but it, to do some, it, it really opened me up to being able to talk to a wider audience. So you've been all over the place. Yeah. All right. So tell me about that. I mean, so you were at Cotter. You were on the uh, the R Ridgeway or Ridgeway? Uh, Riverway. Riverway. And you were at all of these different places. How did you get to the ALC? And what did you see about the ALC that you thought, yep, this is what I want to do? Um, it was in my school life. I kind of just stepped on it and drove on to it. And going to the ALC, because none of the other schools were as good for me, but going to the ALC, being able to take my time to do 
like what I wanted to do and inevitably aligned with Ted Koch um, made me feel better about everything that I was doing. So it really helped me win in the end. Yeah, for sure. What made you decide this was the year for you to make a career in music? Well, my biggest reason is my name is Ian Hamilton. And I could see the image of Ted Koch when I started mm -hmm. growing up that way. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the main reasons I made the change to Ian Hamilton. So you feel like you're getting caught up here, you know, yeah. so you have this year, you know, maybe a half a year left. Yeah. It's not like you can't make it. Wonderful. So let's go back to the community projects or community service projects. Have you been involved in any of them? Um, yeah, our first project as we were moving out, we went to um, um, Birmingham and we wrote one on our own and we created it at Hello Baby Prison. Oh, so the senior citizen. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. And what did you think about that? It was such a fun project. We did it like five or six weeks. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really just being there and just, you know, making the inmates stay in there. So much fun teaching them how to play games, and they're constantly caught up in like how to play some session. So, so what did you learn about that that interaction with the uh, with misconceptions about you guys, or any misconceptions about the community? Um, it was it kind of just reinforced those things that I knew is that these people are super nice. They they don't they don't want to take shit from an inmate, and they want to move their game too. And it'll be right under their nose. That's great. Yeah, and I completely agree with you. I mean, you know, that it's, it's, you know, something you need more, more time to get out there and see personally how tight it is there. And one of the big things we like to do here in the Mount Airy is that uh, we do a safety dinner with the Mount Airy Mayor and uh, some key members. And it's just amazing to see the energy they have and his fervor So, what do you want viewers to know, Tristan, about who you are and who you are? Who you are? Well, we're we're not a bad team. I mean, um, some of us might not have the most top notch games, but we are always working to better ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of our in the mind right now. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, I completely agree with everything Tristan just said. Uh, the thing that's a bad rap on Grand Rapids is a lot of people get it is and a lot of people get the word out about it but it's actually really hard work people that either they don't work well in big groups or they just can't deal with um, working on their own tools better and they come back to me to be used to a single teacher mm -hmm. because it really slims down the class and allows you to be more one-on-one -on -one. you talked a little bit about misconceptions about you guys and about an ALC Let's talk a little bit more about that. I think there is a misconception about what an ALC kid is, and who would like to speak to that about misconceptions? Um, I think the, one of the biggest misconceptions, like Tristan had stated, is that we're not good students or we're not good kids in general. Right. But that's not really what the ALC is for. That is correct. It's for students that need to catch up in some facet. Either they they couldn't go to school because they had a kid, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they can't go to school because they're having really trouble, like really bad trouble at home. Mm -hmm. um, the ALC allows you to stop doing your work for a short period of time, like maybe a month or so. And then when you come back, you pick up right where you stopped. So it allows you to do just, you go at your own pace. Yeah. I don't think I could put it any other. Personalized the learning for you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm just, I'm all emotional about it. It's, it's true. All of what both of you are saying is really true. And it's since I've been here, one of the things I've really wanted folks to know is the ALC is truly a part of Winona area public schools. The feeling I get, not just here in Winona, but around the state of Minnesota, is sometimes the ALC and the kids are kind of left over on the side and you just are there, kind of in Siberia somewhere. And I, I don't believe that one bit. The goal for us is to, to, to personalize your learning but to inevitably walk across the stage and feel like they're independent enough to be able to, to, to do some things for our community in the future. And so uh, hearing you folks, both of you talk about that, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me, I am getting kind of emotional. I mean, I'm, it's awesome. Um, so what, 
obviously we have the uh, project-based learning, but what other things are we doing to make a difference so that, that our ALC students are being viewed in a different way? Um, Any other things going on? We're just, I, I would say that the biggest aspect of it is the project-based learning. Yeah. I don't think there's much else to say because it does so much. Right. Um, some groups were going out and picking up garbage yeah. and they got stopped on the street and told that people loved what they were doing oh. and um, it was great that they were helping the community. Um, other than that, I really, I just think it's such a great thing. I don't know if there's much else that could overshadow it. So one of the things I am thinking about is we also now have night school going yeah, on there. Right. So that's something for kids who might want to try a different approach that way. Are you guys involved with that at all, or no? Oh, no, I am not. You're not involved at the night school at all. I'm not involved in the night school, no. But um, currently, the school does facilitate the life skills 101 class. Life skills 101. Um, yep. Which is a great class. Mm -hmm. I took that about two years ago. Okay. Really helpful. Yeah. It's a fun class. Yeah. So you guys are, you know, we got about two minutes left, and and normally I, when I finish, I I say, is there one final thing you want to say to Winona and let them know. So let's start on the far left over here, Tristan. Anything you want them to know about Tristan? Anything you want them to know about ALC? Um, Winona is yours. <laughs> <laughs> don't assume, just don't assume that all students are bad because of the yeah. rep the ALC has from just how it got it. Yeah. I have no idea, yeah. but we're, we're not all bad. And like Jack said, we're, most of us there are there to catch up on credit. Exactly. Jack, anything you want went on to know? Um, like Tristan said, we're not all bad students. I've been going to the ALC for two and a half years, like stated, and I've seen such a change and such a growth in not only the students, but the teaching base. And it feels good to know that the school is changing and I'm getting to be a part of it. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here. I know sometimes you get nervous sitting in front of cameras or whatnot, but I love having kids come and speak on the show because it's one thing to have adults and whatnot, but it's another thing to hear voices of kids. And uh, I shouldn't call you kids because you're 18 years old. <laughs> you're 17, 18 years old. But um, I want to thank you both for what you're doing for ALC, what you're doing for yourself. Um, I'm real proud of you both. And, uh, I, community, I just want you to know if you ever want to get a chance to just see some real beautiful teaching going on and kids really learning, get on over to the ALC. It's not what people perceive it to be. It's, uh, it's an amazing uh, building and it's an amazing group of kids. So both of you, thank you very, very much. I want to thank you as a community member. I thank you very much. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Cost Cutters of Winona for your support. Uh, I'm just blown away by your sponsorship. Uh, lots of amazing things going on here, and I'm so truly emotional uh, based on what I'm hearing from my kids. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to another episode of Making It Great. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>